stand up and sing with us? God number one, we're supposed to have it all together. And when they ask how you doing, just smile and tell them never better. Line number two, everybody's life is perfect except yours. So keep your messes and your wounds, your secrets safe with you behind closed doors. Truth be told, the truth is rarely told. I'd say I'm fine, yeah I'm fine, oh I'm fine, hey I'm fine, but I'm not. I'm broken, and when it's out of control, I say it's under control, but it's not. And you know it, I don't know why it's so hard to admit it, when being honest is the only way to fix it. There's no failure, no fall, there's no sin you don't already know, so let the truth be told. There's a sign on the door, it says come as you are, but I doubt it. Cause if they lived like that was true, every Sunday morning pew would be crowded. But didn't you say church should look more like a hospital? A safe place for the sick, the sinner and the scarred and the prodigals like me. Truth be told, the truth is rarely told. Oh, am I the only one who says I'm fine? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, I'm fine. Hey, I'm fine, but I'm not. I'm broken, and when it's out of control, I say it's under control, but it's not. And you know it. I don't know why it's so hard to admit it. Being honest is the only way to fix it. There's no failure, no fall, there's no sin you don't already know. So let the truth be told. Can I really stand here unashamed? Knowing that your love for me won't change. Oh God, if that's really true, then let the truth be told. Say I'm fine, yeah I'm fine, oh I'm fine, hey I'm fine, but I'm not. I'm broken, and when it's out of control, I say it's under control, but it's not. And you know it, I don't know why it's so hard to admit it, when being honest is the only way to fix it. There's no failure, no fall, there's no sin you don't already know, yeah I know. There's no failure, no fall, there's no sin you don't already know. So let the truth be told. Good morning and welcome to Discovery Church. We're so happy that you're here with us this morning in person and watching our live stream. Um, we have several announcements that we need to make, and um, then we will move on with the passing of the peace and our worship. Um, the Easter egg hunt is upon us. As a reminder, I thought I might just dress up my ears a little bit, and um, I forgot to tell you last week that we do need you to bring stuffed eggs. Um, plastic eggs are abundant at Walmart and Dollar Tree and all kinds of places right now, so it's a good time to get them. Um, we are trying to plan for if 100 children show up. The yard signs are going to go in the yard this week, and we're hoping that that's going to drive more traffic to our Easter egg hunt. So the more eggs you can bring, the better, and we can't have too many. So if you would please kindly start to bring those in, um, you can bring them next Sunday. Um, I'll also be here at various times during the week if you need to meet me or if you need me to come get them. Um, you can just let me know. I'll be glad to do that. 
Um, we are still looking for volunteers to help with the Easter egg hunt, and you can volunteer in the area of crafts or games or the snack, or you can help us with the gospel presentation. Um, there's lots of things to do. Um, we also need people to just mix and mingle with the parents who come with the children. Um, that was really, really helpful last year to just have people available to fellowship. Um, so please make plans to be here on April 1st. Um, the Easter egg hunt starts at 10, so volunteers will need to be here around 930 just to help us get everything set up. And we're looking forward to it. Hoping to meet some new friends that day. Um, also want to remind you that we do have a Good Friday service um, scheduled for 7 o'clock. Is it 7 o'clock? For some reason, 6.30 jumped in my mind as I said that. And um, we want all of you to come for that. Our mission focus is the Everyday Grace uh, Foster Closet, and there is a list on our uh, website as well as on the bulletin board, the missions bulletin board out in the lobby, if you need suggestions of things that they might need. And um, they do have a great need, especially this time of year. So do remember them when you're out at the store um, so that you can grab some of those baby items that might be helpful for them right now. Are there other announcements? I have one quick yes. announcement. Okay. Um, William and Charlie Estes have been selling tickets to a scout fair. This is to celebrate Camp Tuscarora's 100th year in operation. Wow. It's, a, it's a really big deal. So our local scout council is having this big event. Anyway, I had an anonymous donor purchase a fair amount of tickets. And I'm going to leave the tickets on the back table. They're welcome to anyone here who wants to go. Uh, whether as an adult or if you have children or grandchildren. It's a very, very family-friendly event. This will be held on April 22nd at the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fairground. There's chili tasting, Dutch oven cooking, rain gutter regatta, derby races, all kinds of scout games and expositions. It's a great family fun day and a great way to uh, recognize and honor Camp Tuscarora for their 100th year. And so I'll stick these on the back. Thanks. There will also be invitations to the Easter egg hunt available on the back table after services. Um, so do grab a couple of those and hand them out to your neighbors. Are there any other announcements? If not, let's pass the peace. We're going to continue with our praise and worship. In the darkness we were waiting, without hope and without life, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes, to fulfill the law and prophets, to a virgin came the word, from a throne of endless glory to a cross. 
and fighting our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, a Lamb that was slain for sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains, every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God. The Lion of Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, a Lamb that was slain for sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Oh, 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 oh,
lifting up your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. was really hoping for that song, Fred. I didn't tell you that, but I really was hoping for that when I saw the scripture for today. It's time again for the prayers of the people, and we like to begin that time with a time of praise um, for all the things that we have seen God doing um, in and around us, and amen, baby, amen. So would anybody like to start us off with a praise? I'll start. Um, Lynn is home. And um, everything went well, and we're just um, going to continue to pray for her to heal and to feel better and to be cancer-free. Uh, yes? I'm sorry? Yes, absolutely. Praising God and thanking Him for our praise band and the worship that they plan and, and do with us and for us every week. They make it look easy, but it's not. <laughs> Who else has a praise they'd like to lift up? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is amazing. So, so you saw her up and around. Yeah, she saw Lynn walking around, and she's getting around amazingly well. That's all Jesus. Yep. Who else has a praise? Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to prayer. Um, who would like to lift up a prayer this week? Who do we need to pray for? Of course, we'll start with Lynn, and we'll continue to pray for her healing. And that she'll be cancer free. Um, who else has a prayer? Yes. We're praying for Tony to heal up and be back with us. Who else needs prayer this week? Okay, um, we're going to pray for Tom this week. Do you want me to go ahead? And... Okay, all right. So he's beginning a new chemo and infusion therapy this week, and um, we're just going to pray for him to sail through like he did last time. <laughs> God is so good. All right. Who else are we praying for? I will ask you to remember um, James and Molly and Emily and Molly's friend Madison as they're going back to Boone right now, and um, and just pray for travel mercies for them and for everybody who's on the road. I know Mel and her family are also out and about. Um, are there others? Okay. 
Okay. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning humbled in your presence, Lord. Amazed at how you love us. Awestruck at your glory. God, thank you for revealing yourself to us in the person of Jesus. Lord, we have so many praises we could lift up, and I know there are probably a million of them out there just in this room alone of all the things that you've done this week. But just a few to mention, Lord, we praise you and we thank you for what you're doing for Lynn, and we pray, Lord, that you continue to heal her and help her to be cancer-free. Thank you for her mobility and how well she's getting along, and we just pray for that to continue, Lord, and we give you all the glory, and we thank you. Lord, for our praise band, we just thank you so much for sending them here, for inspiring them week after week, for their willingness to use their voices and their gifts that you've given them to multiply your kingdom. Lord, we thank you that we get to be along for the ride. Father, our prayer list this week has many unmentioned prayers, so many unspoken prayers, Lord, and we just we know that you know what they are, and we thank you, Father, that you're attentive to us when we pray. Father, for Lynn, we just continue to ask for healing for her, complete wholeness and peace for her. Thank you for everything you've already done and everything you're about to do. Lord, for Tony to um, continue to heal and to be back with us next week is what we're praying, Lord. Lift him up, Father, and, and help him to get back to us. Lord, for Tom and this new chemotherapy that he's about to begin, we pray, Lord, that you'll bless him in the same way that you did before so that he can pass through this time and the cancer will be controlled and he'll be able to eat and not lose weight and be strong, Lord. Give him your strength. And we thank you, Father, for what you're about to do for Tom. Lord, for all those who are on the road this week, especially Molly and James and Emily, we ask for your blessings and for travel mercies for them as they go and as they come back home. Lord, everywhere we go, you're with us. Everywhere we drive, you've been there before us and prepared the way. For every good work that we do, Lord, we know that you prepared it for us ahead of time. And the Bible tells us that all we have to do is walk in it. And we thank you, Lord, for laying those good works out before us. Help us to be bold, to step out, Lord, and to go forward with those. Father, when Jesus' disciples asked him how they should pray, this is the prayer that he shared with them. And we all say it together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Book of Revelation, Chapter 1 The Revelation from Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. John to the seven churches in the province of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood 
and has made us to be a kingdom and priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. So shall it be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus, was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now look. I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, what you have seen, what is now and what will take place later, the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. When the children come down, Wow, everybody's legs are so long now. I'm really impressed how much y'all are growing. Wow. All right, so who likes or used to like, if you don't anymore, dot to dot? Anybody like dot to dot? I used to do those constantly when I was a kid. I still do them sometimes. Um, when I'm looking for one for you guys, I might do it myself just to see if it's fun. And um, the cool thing about dot to dot is sometimes you really can't tell what the picture is until you actually do it. Now this one, I bet you can guess. Yeah, what is it? It's Jesus, right? Yep, because you can already see his outline, right? But sometimes on a dot to dot, you really can't tell what the picture is until you get it finished. And then you're like, oh, that's what that was. Have you ever had an aha moment like that? Where you're looking at something and you can't quite tell what it is and then suddenly it all comes together and you get it? Mm -hmm. You have? He's floating. He is kind of floating, isn't he? I think he's rising up to heaven, right? So sometimes you look at a thing and you really can't tell what it is if you're standing really close. But if you back up and you back up and you back up maybe a little bit more, if you get far enough away, you see the whole big picture and then it all kind of comes together and you know what you're looking at. My mom told me recently that she saw a friend of my brother's who he grew up with, and she hadn't seen him in a long time. And looking at him, she really couldn't tell who he was because he had gray hair and a gray beard, and he just he didn't look the same. But as soon as he spoke, she knew who he was. And there's a moment like that in the Bible where Jesus has arisen on Resurrection Day, and Mary 
is upset because she doesn't know where he is. And she sees this man and she says, do you know where my Lord has been taken? And he says her name. He says, Mary. And then she knows who he is immediately. The book of Revelation is a little bit like a dot to dot and a little bit like one of those pictures that you have to stand far back from to see what it really is. It's a little bit like being in the garden looking for your lost Savior when he says your name and then you know him. The book of Revelation, just like the whole Bible, is there to reveal Jesus. That's what revelation means. It means something new has been revealed to you. Something you couldn't see before, now you can see. And it's all about Jesus. Jesus is the lion. Jesus is the lamb. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior. Amen. All right, let's pray and thank God for the book of Revelation. We'll talk about it more later. Dear Jesus, thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega. Thank you for showing us who God is. Thank you for being with us and understanding us in that special way of being human. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you. And it's in your precious and holy name that we pray. And everybody says, Amen. And I will meet you right back there. Pastor, a friend of mine one time started something in his church. He said he would get people in the church to come up and say, what book would you like me next to preach from? And they would pick one, then he would tell the congregation what it was, and then they could tell him some scripture to preach from. And it went okay. And one day someone came up and said, how about Revelation? And not thinking, he said, fine. Then he told the congregation, come up. And so he said after a few days, he realized that probably almost every verse in Revelation, somebody wanted to find out what it meant. He said he figured out that probably he would have to preach for a year from the book of Revelation just to get through it. And that's sort of like anybody that attempts to preach from Revelation kind of runs across. I'm going to do a Revelation sermon this morning and next week. Um, and we're going to get in two chapters, not all of them. That's as far as we're going to get with two sermons, and that's going to skip a lot, even in that. The book of Revelation is a book of prophecy, is a book of vision, is a book that you cannot just take literally because it won't make any sense. A symbolism, some of it were told what it means, some of it were not. The biggest thing you sometimes can say about Revelation, I got no idea. <laughs> and that's being very honest. But it is a book that's put in there and it says that we're to learn from it. And where we learn from, from Bible studies, our own personal studies, our own revelations that God gives us about it, it's a book to be read and looked at. So today, what I hope to do is kind of give you an overall general view of Revelation. Then next week we'll get into the Pacific Scriptures. But the book of Revelation was written to seven churches in Asia Minor. Written by the beloved disciple, most scholars accept that it was John because he was on the island of Patmos during this time when the book came about. And it says John, but I'm talking about John the disciple. One of the things about it that we learn very openly, these seven churches 
are about to undergo great persecution. And the overall purpose of this book is to get them ready for it. And of course then, to take it on up the what does it mean after that time, is to get us ready when bad things happen. Things will happen. Whether it's individually or as a church or whatever, it's to make sure we're ready. And a lot of symbols. Some are explained, some aren't. One of the things that we're going to talk about this morning in a little bit is the seven stars and the seven lampstands, which we're told what they mean. I think some of the importance is about that. Lampstands, I believe, has a purpose. Why it's a lampstand is because the light it shows. We all the time talk about churches shining the light of Christ out in the community, that type of thing. These lampstands represent that. These seven churches, each one of them, and their light for Christ. The seven stars in the hand of Christ as he walks among them are for the seven angels, each one over one of the churches. Which brings out a very interesting idea, which has some other things in Scripture. Angels watch over the churches, then and today. Um, we don't know what angels assigned to discovery, but if we believe Scripture, there's an angel that kind of watches over us. And that was a big comfort to the seven churches who were undergoing, going to undergo this persecution and should be to us today. And even as small or as large a church is, there's an angel watching over and helping to guide us. Now, what did that mean at the time for the seven churches? They are undergoing a great persecution coming up. And the reason why I think that's the starting of Revelation and what we find out is it tells us churches are going to be under persecution all the time. Individuals are going to be under persecution all the time. Now, by that mean, it must mean that suddenly there are going to be people coming through the back door, arresting us, taking us off today. But you could look at COVID. We went through, still going through, not quite as bad today as it was, but yeah, we can look at that. The church, the church was under persecution. And how we know it was under persecution? A lot of churches didn't come back from it. A lot of churches died. We had some in our own presbytery who died. When they came back, they were very, very small. And when they came back, there wasn't enough to sustain them. Not because of death. Sometimes it was some of that. But just some of the people got out of the habit and didn't come and small church you can't afford to have people not coming for long times and that is persecution it's a type of persecution that the church will face say the Ukrainian church today war is a great persecution for that church churches have been bombed and rubble People can't go, attend. Sure. Churches are, in each age, go through time to persecution. Whether it be individual churches or the church worldwide. And what this book says is understand something. You have an angel watching over, you have things happening. And God's there, making sure that if you continue to do the things you're supposed to do, you'll survive. But it's going to be sometimes a battle, and that's okay. The purpose of Revelation, once we get past 
the second chapter and the third is to tell you a lot of the things that's going to happen. They do it so symbolically and stuff. Some of them we just got to say, it's going to happen, whatever it is. We're not sure. You could take out 10 commentators right on the Revelation. They give you 10 different ideas of what it might be. And a good, a good person that writes on Revelation says what it might be. Never says it, a lot of these that's what it is because we just don't know. We can speculate. But the overall purpose, we do know. It was to get these churches right for the coming persecution and to tell them something. Do this whole thing. We look at the New Jerusalem. We look at all this thing coming down from heaven. We look at the apocalypse. We look at the final battles. And it's one thing that the constants do it. God, even in the worst of times, is still in control. And if we stay faithful to the end, we win. We stay faithful to the end, we win. The last thing in, in the book was about God's in heaven, heaven's on, heaven and everybody's with him. And then the book says, the end. It is a book to tell us that no matter what we go through, if we stay faithful to God through the whole thing, that he'll be faithful to us no matter what comes our way, no matter what burdens we face, no matter what trials we have to withstand. The book of Revelation tells us God understands. He's there with us. He is okay. He's not being overwhelmed by floods or fires or COVID or anything else. It's not going to overwhelm him. We stay faithful. He'll stay faithful to us. The purpose of Revelation is to put, let us put on the armor of God to face all the battles we'll face in life. And we will face them. All we have to do is look at time when we have who needs prayer, what they need. Sure, we all face them. We all face them. And if you stay around long enough and you're here long enough, Someday your name will probably be said that you need prayer. Because we'll all face the battles of life. So if we look at the book of Revelation, and I really do believe it's a book we should study, a book that we should look at in depth, whether we read it ourselves with and I would always say, if you read it yourself, get a good study guide, and go with it, to give you some ideas of what might, some of these things might be. But if you read it and understand that it's to get the churches ready for persecution, it's to get us ready for persecution, whatever forms it takes, it's to get us ready for individual persecutions as well as group persecution, but it gets us ready because God does not abandon us. God will never abandon us. If we stay faithful, he stays faithful to us, and he promises that. And even sometime when we don't stay faithful, he still promises that. He'll be with us. He'll guide us. He'll help us. And that's, that's the message of Revelation. As, as the old janitor up in Pittsburgh Seminary said one time, Students have been in a class of studying Revelation and coming out shaking their heads, as you most of you do when you do study it. And they walked down. He was a kind of an old sage in the seminary, just a janitor, but everybody knew he was a long member of the church and a lot. He had a lot of wisdom. And one of the students going by called him by name and said, What? He said, We've just been in a class of Revelation. On it, and we have no clue. He said, do you understand the revelation? He said, yep, I understand it. And he said, well, what's the secret of understanding? He said, two words, God wins. And you know what? There's probably no better answer on what the book of Revelation is about 
than those two words. That when you see it all and you put it all together and what you can't understand, what you can't understand, know this. God never abandons us and God wins. In the end, God wins. So next week, we're going to look at the church of Ephesus. We're going to look at it, see what they're going on there. Each of the seven churches doing good things and have problems. And that's, a, that's one of the things we learn about too. All churches have problems and will have problems. As Dr. Al Edwards up at First Church Raleigh when he was there, one of the great preachers of the area, he said there's three types of churches. Those that are getting ready to have a problem, those that are in a problem, and those who just got through with a problem. So when you get through with a problem, you take a deep breath and get ready for the next problem. And you know what? If you look back through the history of churches, kind of right. He's kind of right. So next week we look at the church of Ephesus and we'll see what their problems are. And that God warns of that and it's what churches today got to be warned about. We got to look at that to make sure we don't ever fall into that category. Book of Revelation, great book to study, hard book to preach. If you go in trying to say, I'm going to figure out all the things of it, don't, don't waste your time. Leave it closed. That isn't what God meant it for. If you go in and just say, I want to see kind of what we can go and at the end God wins and how he does some of that, you'll get, you'll get a message. So the book, as we saw in the chapters today, yeah, we're supposed to read it. We're supposed to do what we can, understand what we can of it, understand the symbols as we can. And sometimes with the combinators, what they guess is the best guess of what they mean. But we're supposed to get over the whole purpose. God's here. God's with us through the trials of life, through the trials of a church, and eventually God wins for all time. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we do come to you this morning and thank you for the book of Revelation. And much as we can understand and all the things we can't understand, we understand one thing. You're in control in the good times and the bad times of life. In the good times of a church and the struggles of the church. You're there. You're with us. In the end, if we remain faithful, we win. And no matter what, you win. And we thank you and we praise you Jesus' holy name. Amen. Will the ushers come forward? pray. Father and God, we thank you for the gift. We thank you for the ability to give gifts to you. We ask that you bless the gift as well as bless those who give. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand and join us.
say the good words that we say every Sunday. Wherever you go, God is sending you. Wherever you are, he put you there. He has a purpose in your being there. Christ who indwells you has something he wants to do through you where you are. Believe this and go in his grace and love and power and all God's people say, Amen. Come let us sing a song a song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. 